This is Seven National News and in our top story. Isana Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of Dubai Executive Council, officially launched the Dubai Tram last night, which opened for public today. At the opening ceremony, His Highness the Crown Prince of Dubai officially launched the Emirates' new mode of transport in the presence of the Deputy Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The Crown Prince of Dubai was briefed on the details of the project at the Al Barsha Depot by His Excellency Mathur Al Tayyar, the Chairman of the Board and Executive Director of the Roads and Transport Authority. After viewing a unique holographic multimedia presentation which showed various aspects and statistics about the Dubai tram, the Crown Prince of Dubai then rode on the inaugural train along with senior government officials. With the tram now officially open for the public, the 11th of November will be remembered by many as the Emirate welcomed yet another mode of transport with a spectacular display of fireworks. According to RTA's Director of Rail Operations, the tram is expected to carry around 27,000 passengers daily. However, following the completion of the second phase, with six more stations to be added, ridership is expected to extend till 66,000 daily. The tram considered to be one of the longest tram projects in the world that uses uh, a power feed from the ground rather than the cantonary system, which is a popular around the world. It's also one of the unique projects that has 11 stations, fully air-conditioned, and it has platform screen doors for passenger protection. We also have 11 trams equipped with a very high standard of safety and security. Well, as per our studies, uh, we noticed that this area, uh, the growth rate is, is really high, especially during the, the winter seasons when the, when the uh, weather gets uh, really good, like the season that we are now. Uh, it gets really crowded and it's a bit difficult for cars to move around. So that's why you will see the three major stations have been fairly positioned in a very good areas where it can take people throughout the uh, Jumeirah Beach resident area. And this was our aim, really, to, to introduce the tram in that particular area. The Federal National Council has held its second meeting of the fourth ordinary session of the 15th legislative chapter, which was attended by the Health Minister, His Excellency Abdurrahman bin Mohammed al Awais, and the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and Minister of State for FNC Affairs, His Excellency Dr. Anwar bin Mohammed Gargash. During the session, the Council passed a draft federal law on private healthcare facilities. The law is aimed at regulating development, management and operation of private healthcare facilities in a way that would guarantee provision of healthcare services in accordance with international standards. The FNC members tabled five questions to the government representatives relating to creation of a federal register for property owners, classification of Emirati fishermen, Health Ministry's procedures for issuing disease-free certificates to expatriates, the National Strategy for Nutrition and the development of private psychiatric hospitals. Speaker Mohammed Ahmed al Moor, in his opening remarks stated that the House was pressing ahead with its role of modernising the legislative framework through a constructive and open discussion on issue of concern to the citizens. And experts believe that by 2030, 592 million people worldwide will have diabetes. In a lead-up to the observance of the World Diabetes Day on the 14th of November, the UAE's private and public sectors are organising a variety of events to raise levels of education, awareness and engagement to combat and prevent the disease. Last year, countries in the GCC were among the top 15 countries with the highest prevalence of diabetes. While there are many ongoing campaigns to combat the disease, experts say a lot of work remains to be done. At the media briefing held earlier today between the Dubai Health Authority, International Diabetes Federation and Novo, Novo Nordisk, experts say if diabetes is left undiagnosed or untreated, it could lead to diseases of the heart and kidney, as well as lead to amputations and blindness. Last year, the UAE ranked fifth regionally for prevalence of the disease behind Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar and Bahrain in the Diabetes 2013 Atlas updates. It was also estimated that there are over 34 million diabetics in MENA and another 16.8 million who have the condition but are unaware. The chairperson of Dubai Combat and Control Committee for Diabetes and the head of endocrine Department at the DHA, Dr. Fatia Alawadi, says they continue to increase their efforts to make an impactful change. 
In July 2014, the ETA had established a committee called the Compact and Control Committee. This is a committee, uh, uh, you know, of expert people in the field of diabetes across the uh, all DHA hubs, and that is in order to uh, draw up the uh, strategic plans and also the uh, national programs for the prevention and control of diabetes. And in fact, what the task of this committee is to uh, unify the policies and procedures uh, across all the level, whether it's primary, secondary or tertiary levels, as well as, you know, unifying the guidelines for the management of diabetes. We had, uh, you know, DJ along with the uh, Dubai Statistics Centers had already run a screening uh, a survey uh, beginning of this year, which, where the data will be available and will be announced by our Director General, His uh, Excellency Aysel al uh, on, uh, on the day when we celebrate the World Diabetes Day. Type 2 diabetes is on the rise, even in children. It accounts for about 90% of cases across the globe and is caused by a combination of lifestyle and genetic factors. In an effort to intensify the fight against diabetes, the Health Authority will hold a series of initiatives during the month to, com to connect the community. We uh, already, the uh, uh, DHA Clinical Nutrition Department, in, uh, in col uh, collaboration with the uh, uh, Dubai Municipality and also with Ministry of Education, had uh, uh, published a guidelines on the school canteens. And also, it's already implemented in all across all uh, you know these schools in uh, Dubai, whether they're government or private school. Uh, we uh, the uh, we also run a lot of educational programs for the school teachers and uh, uh, the uh, also the school children as well as their parents. This year, what we are doing, we're going to have in all the uh, hubs uh, related to DHA in all the hospitals and clinic uh, under the DHA will have, uh, you know, will celebrate the World Diabetes uh, Day in their uh, premises starting from 14th of November ongoing and we're going to visit also schools uh, to educate the school children. Uh, we are uh, going to launch an app applications uh, and that is in terms of education of the public to send also tips to the public and eventually on 27th of November we're going to have a big event and that event in order to break the Guinness World Record uh, in the public awarenesses. A new initiative will work to recruit outstanding Emirati graduates to serve as teachers for two years in high-need public schools, according to an announcement made by the Abu Dhabi Education Council on Tuesday. When launched, the program will aim to attract more Emiratis to the teaching profession while addressing staff shortages in the teaching of subjects such as science, English and maths. According to an ADEC statement, graduates from a range of disciplines will be selected from leading universities. Though it will not be mandatory for the students to sign up for the program, authorities will offer top graduates an opportunity to serve the nation. Candidates who are chosen will receive extensive training prior to beginning their teaching tenure and alumni will be supported for leadership roles within and outside the education sector. The initiative is also expected to help raise the perception of the teaching profession among Emiratis, which is of particular concern among education officials with the number of Emirati students pursuing education as a field of study still declining. ADEC officials revealed in August that a total of 4,869 Emirati educators are currently employed in Abu Dhabi public schools. This includes 300 new Emirati teachers hired ahead of the start of the 2014-15 academic year. The UAE has been found to have a near-perfect balance in gender equality according to findings from the Global Gender Gap Report 2014. The issue of gender equality and the findings of the report were discussed at the recently concluded World Economic Forum Summit on the Global Agenda, which took place in Dubai. The statistics revealed that the UAE had near-perfect equality in the areas of educational attainment and health and survival, two key categories which contribute to a country's index. Ranked joint first in literacy rate and enrolment in secondary education amongst all nations, it was also shown that there was only a 1% gap between women and men in overall educational attainment. Meanwhile, there was less than a 4% gap found between males and females in the health and survival category, confirming the equal opportunities for both genders in these two crucial areas of society. The Global Gender Gap Report 2014, now in its ninth year, attempts to understand where global gender gaps stand 
and then examines methods which can be implemented to bridge this divide. It has proven that a narrowing of equality discrepancy between males and females in a nation can improve competitiveness in the overall economy. Dubai Municipality has taken action to shut down 15 cafes that have violated the anti-tobacco law. According to a report by Emirates News Agency WAM, the cafes were previously issued a warning by the municipality and were given a deadline to rectify their situation. The municipality did not state the exact nature of the violations. However, closures were part of the municipality's efforts to enforce the federal tobacco law after a grace period to comply with provisions of the law recently expired. The rules govern aspects such as places where shisha can be served, how close they can be found to residential areas and schools and other requirements. Commenting on the closures, the Assistant Director General of Dubai Municipality for Environment, Public Health and Safety Section was quoted as saying that the municipality is committed to implementing the executive regulations of the anti-tobacco law, adding that the law has given the municipality the authority to govern cafes. And finally, in the bulletin, as we, held, as we heard earlier, with the Dubai tram now officially open, residents and visitors to the Emirate came out in large numbers this morning to take their first ride in the new mode of transport. Stretching a total of 10.6 kilometres, the new Dubai tram will serve a total of 11 stations through the densely populated neighbourhoods of as Safur, Dubai Marina and Jumeirah Beach residents, whilst also serving the Dubai Media City and Knowledge Village. The tram officially opened for public this morning at 6.30 and on its first day, general public of all ages flocked over to the stations to make their trips to work, beach areas or simply take a joy ride. The tram will run for 20 hours a day from 6.30 in the morning to 1.30 a.m. on Saturdays to Thursdays and on Fridays it will run from 9 in the morning to 1.30 a.m. With one gold cabin, four silver cabins and two cabins for women and children, each tram has a capacity to carry 405 passengers. Trams will be running between intervals of 10 minutes during peak hours and 12 minutes during non-peak hours. With regards to payments, passengers are expected to tap their null cards on the readers each time they enter or exit the tram. A silver class fare costs a total of three dirhams, irrespective of the distance travelled, while it is six dirhams for gold class. It is expected to be a huge attraction, particularly amongst tourists who will be making use of the transportation to get around the tourist attractions, whilst residents around the JBR and Marina area will be hoping for a decrease in traffic congestion. It seems really well organised. It's our first trip to Dubai uh, and the public transport system seems really well organised and everything. And we're here on our honeymoon and it just seems a good way to get around, to be honest. So. Yeah, it was, yeah. A, it was a pleasant surprise because we didn't realise the tram system was open. We have the Lonely Planet travel book um, and we thought, oh, there's no mention of tram. Where, where is the tram system? But it's, it's splendid and it, we only found it because of the lady in the... Monorail. The yeah. monorail told us about it, but it's, yeah. Yeah, I'm liking the right, air yeah. conditioning as well inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice and cool, yeah. We're staying in JLT, and uh, so we just walked to the Dubai Marina station, and we got on there, and now we're at Jumeirah Residence 1, and planning to go to the beach. We love it here. It was so easy to use, and um, it's a great convenience, because um, we love the beach, and going to the beach, we have to walk quite a bit, or take a taxi, which has a lot of traffic sometimes. Mm. So this is perfect, and it's yeah, quick. It's awesome. For me and the kids, it's easier to take the, the tram, uh, better than the car. It's, uh, sometimes I use the car for sure, but not, not for now. It's easier to go to GBR with a, tram, with a tram and Dubai Marina Mall. Um, I live in the marina and I didn't want to risk taking the tram this morning, but I'm taking it on the way home to try it out. It'll be completely convenient because um, there's a stop right in front of my apartment, so I'll probably take the tram two or three times a day. We just had a break from our classes, so we thought we'll take a try. And uh, we, we are coming from Knowledge Village right now just for a tour and we stopped over here just to see. It's a little slow but it's nice and the fares are also pretty good. 